Hey, it's Doug Belshaw. I just want to take a few minutes to talk about open recognition and talk about this idea of doing recognition and credentialing a little bit differently. So here we are, we've got credentialing and a rounded recognition, and we kind of intuitively know this. We know that there's a credential, but also the credential doesn't mean anything unless there's the recognition of your peers, your team, your network. Without that kind of recognition, the credential doesn't mean anything. Otherwise, we'd be making up our own credentials all the time and issuing them to ourselves. So when we're talking about open recognition, what we're really talking about is this thing here, the awareness and appreciation of talents, skills, and aspirations in ways that go beyond just the credentials that we've got now. And that might include recognizing the rights of individuals, communities, and territories to apply their own labels and definitions. And it might not be that they've got those frameworks completely figured out. They might be emergent or implicit. So this is the opposite of sitting down and thinking very hard about categories and then trying to put everyone else into the same category. It's emergent, it's implicit, it's decentralized, okay? It's recognizing people in their diversity rather than trying to put everyone in the same box. So this idea here is about using this concept of open recognition to map real world, as in, you know, in the real world, what people have actually got, skills and attributes. And the this is a part one, and I'm gonna take some time to go through it because when I've been explaining this to people, I've been going through it really quickly, and I think that might be confusing. So here we go. If you've heard about open badges, you'll know that they can be issued by anyone for anything. It kind of democratizes the means of credentialing. So you can issue badges for someone being a good listener, but you can also issue badges for like a PhD. You can issue a badge for anything. Now, different people understand different skills in different ways. So we need to map those um, according to the context that we're in. So for example, in one situation, you might explain that you're a project manager. Another one, you might say that you're a delivery, delivery lead because you use different languages in different situations. So I came up with this approach and I kind of did the MVP of it and I sketched it out as an actual kind of app or service. And this first blog post, um, to this part one, goes from folksonomy to taxonomy. And by what we mean by that is taking the ways that people naturally describe you or describe people in a network and then mapping that onto existing taxonomies like skills frameworks. So let's have a look how I did that. Well, really easily, all I did was create a Google form and said, all right, in what context do you know this person? Do you know them professionally? Have you worked with them? Do you know them professionally, but you haven't worked with them? Do you know them personally because you're part of their family or a friend or something else? And then just really three questions. So free text, not ticking a box in terms of do they have these skills, but what do they know a lot about? And the example is, it could be a subject area, geography, or it could be something more specific, identifying rare books. You can go into detail, you can type things in. And then again, like what are they skilled in? It could be coding in Python, but it could be facilitation. So you can give examples and context there as well. And then are there particular behaviors that they exhibit which you or other people might find useful. And that's kind of a catch-all for everything else. It could be the impact on the work that you've done or something that you've observed that doesn't fit in any of the boxes as well. And once we gathered that, I just put it out there on different social networks and I got 20 responses within 24 hours. And then I exported that from Google Forms to a Google Sheet. So here we are, here's the Google Sheet. And all I've done is I've taken that, converted it to a PDF, and then put it into ChatGPT. At the time, you needed a plugin for this, but I think ChatGPT does this natively now. So there we go. I prompted ChatGPT and asked it to synthesize based on this kind of free text that people had put into the Google form, asked it to synthesize that and say, well, what kinds of things are, is this person good at? And in this case, the person was me because I was exper experimenting on myself. So here we are, lots of different things. So um, open badges, public speaking, writing, education, technology, leadership, et cetera. Um, useful behaviors, bringing people together, persistence, openness, not being judgmental. Ooh, 
talk to my wife about that, uh, problem solving, that kind of thing. So now that's great in terms of self-discovery and self-knowledge, but wouldn't it be useful if we could map that against existing skills taxonomies? And that's something which LLMs like ChatGPT are absolutely great at. So in this case here, what we've got is ChatGPT being prompted to have a look at ONET, ESCO, and Nesta. So that's the US-based system, um, a European Commission project, and Nesta, which is based in the UK. So let's map what people said that I was good at against these different frameworks. And what we ended up with after some prompting, which you can have a look at, were, were these answers here. And then when we put them into a table, we get this. So categories of skills, the particular skill or attribute, and then what that is called in the different frameworks that we've prompted ChatGPT um, about. So public speaking in ONET is oral expression, ESCO, oral communication, and Nesta, verbal communication. So it's just mapping those things across. And look how different some of them can be. So openness could be social perceptiveness, open-mindedness, or social skills. So knowing this gives you the ability to say when you're applying for a job or talking to someone, being able to map your skills against their actual framework or their mental framework because they were brought up in a different context to you. So listing your top 10 skills in any particular area, in any different context, became a whole lot easier. So now that we've got that, let's switch to the second post, which maps out how you could actually build a system to do this at scale. Okay, so in this second post, it's recognizing the fact that people arrive at where they're at me as a 43-year-old man, um, having gone on sometimes quite circuitous paths. Not many people go through step-by-step step on a career ladder and just going in a very linear way. So in this part two, what we're, what we're focused on is thinking about how you can use open badges or verifiable credentials to recognize the skills that you've actually got, that your network say you've got, and then endorse that using language that real people use. So let's dive into this. I'm going to skip quite quickly over this kind of system diagram. So the product manager and me couldn't help kind of breaking out the, the flowed chart and figuring out how you'd, how you'd do this. But this is basically looking at how you'd build a, a system if you were going to build a system. But I'm going to skip over that and go straight on to the, the kind of the wireframes that I developed. This is a bit more understandable for people who haven't done that kind of product development before. So let's just talk about this. It starts with yourself. It starts with you doing some kind of self-assessment. So in this case, this is me, Doug Belshaw. Um, I can sign up with my email address or LinkedIn. And then what, what do I know something about? What am I skilled in? What behaviors do I exhibit that other people find useful? And I write some stuff in those boxes. And then I'm asked five people who could ask, who could answer similar questions in terms of, of myself. And then those people are asked to answer the same questions. And then I get my results. So here we are, I've got my results and I can see the different skills and knowledge areas and useful behaviors and things. And then I can choose the skills taxonomies that we might want to map the attributes against. Now, it might be if you were using this as an employer or you're using this in a particular context, you might not allow people to choose the particular context. But for an individual, if there's lots of different frameworks and different ways in which I can map against, I might want to choose a few of those. It's up to you. And then comes the endorsement. So let's say that I want to be endorsed for uh, my writing, my written communication there. I could click on that box. Or persuasion. Let's say that I'm really looking for people to endorse me for persuasion. Um, I choose that skill, and then I'd ask people to endorse me, which is really easy because I've just asked them to identify my skills. So I'm going back to them and saying, hey, would you endorse me for that? Now, the interesting thing about Open Badges 3.0 is that it doesn't require a badge image to issue a credential because it's based on the verifiable credentials data standard. So I can just be issued a, a credential for persuasion, and then the endorsement gets added onto that after the fact. So here we go. Hello again. Thanks for giving Doug some feedback. Um, could you endorse me for persuasion and problem solving? So they endorse me. They write some evidence. They could upload maybe something like, here's Doug in action at our conference speaking, or 
Um, here's some, a testimonial that I'll type into the box. And they type all that in, and then you've got a verified profile because you can upload your photo, a bio, um, it can validate your email address, and then you've got endorsed attributes from real people in your network who are saying, Doug is good at persuasion, Doug is good at problem solving. And when someone clicks on that, it comes up with those endorsements, all right, for those particular skills. And it's mapped to the ONET uh, taxonomy or Nesta or ESCO or whatever one that you want to feed in. So this is almost the exact opposite of trying to smash together taxonomies and coming up with a new one all the time and then trying to fit everyone into boxes. This is the opposite of that. This is taking people where they're at, asking their network what they're good at, and then endorsing people um, in their own language for something that they they can do. And I would love to build this. So if you're watching this, if you're listening to this and you've got some funding, or if you'd like to take this as an idea and build it and then let me use it, awesome. Go away and, and do this. All Creative Commons licensed. You don't have to ask my permission. Just please let me know when you build it or let me assemble a team and I'll build it. Okay. Cheers for listening. Thank you very much. And I'll put the links to these blog posts wherever you find this video. Cheers for now.